All right, good morning again, everybody. My name is Kadi Mchambo, and I'm here with my friend, my very good friend, Jordi Makala, to, you know, present on the world of engineering, per se, at least from our own experience. Um, we'd like to thank Alenika and the team for inviting us to share today. And at the end of it, you know, hope you guys are motivated and, you know, even more determined to become engineers or an engineer of your own kind. So, I want to start off with our journey. Firstly, I believe an engineer is somebody who solves problems. You know, you're able to look and identify problems in society and brainstorm, come up with ideas and implement them as possible solutions. So, for my own journey, I want to say it started from KC. I mean, for, a lot, for the longest while, I remember just wanting to be a medical doctor. But by the time I got to sixth form, I wasn't as much interested in school anymore, um, to say the least. Wait, so you went to Repeat? You went to Campion? No, I went to Kingston College. Oh, I can never tell you the other part. Oh, my. Oh, you see, when you say Fortis Cadere, Cedere, non potest, that's Kingston College. Right? Um, okay. Well, yeah. So, in, in sixth form, I was really bored with school. I was bored with going to classes and stuff. And it came to the point where we were supposed to select what we wanted in university. And I was just reading through U.S. programs. And, you know, you had programs in math, in chemistry, physics, medicine, and all that just seemed so boring, honestly. Um, but I saw electronics engineering, and that piqued my interest. So, having left KC, I went to UWE um, for tertiary level education. Um, did three years at but that's how long the degree is. And after graduating, I spent uh, like four months at home because I was exhausted, honestly. And then started teaching at KC for another four month period. And I'm finally at um, Huawei doing an internship. So I'll hand over to my colleague, Jordi share his journey with you. Uh, is it morning? I think it's still morning. So hello. Uh, hello, good morning, guys. Oh, yes. Uh, Cassie, Daniel, Miss Ricketts is, uh, is saying that you're breaking up a little. Is that the same with me? Or can you guys hear me clearly? Yes? No? You can hear me clearly? Sure. All right. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so my name is Jordan Makala, and as Kadim said, we are very good friends, good, good bridging um, from KC, Antel Manoim. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jordan Makala. I am studying right now, what is it? Computer engineering at University of South Florida. Beautiful, you're hearing me clearly. I'm studying computer engineering at University of South Florida. I'm in my second year. It is a four plus one program. Four plus one meaning you do both your bachelor's and your master's in that um, within the same within, within the same tenure. Before uh, before attending University of South Florida, I was at UTEC and I was at UWE. Uh, it was more or less of the same type of energy, even though I had passions within computer science and physics. I did not clearly see what I want to do out straight out of high school. Um, I know that I was very good at math or, or okay at math and okay not to get an A at math within math courses. Definitely not as good as Kadim because he's top man. And um, thereafter, I began, began delving deeper into, into the whole physics department. 
and I realized I love that as well. And just as time progressed, you know, as time progressed, I, fashion just began, began to grow and interest began to grow and to take, to take root. And I just chose one of them and the first one was Acura Science. The program in itself at University of West Indies was really good, but I wasn't so much interested in, in business accounting because it, it was just not my thing, you know? It was less of it being something that I can do and more of something that I am not willing to do, something that does not challenge me to the level that I, I, I wish to be challenged. The computer science courses, however, were beautiful. Math courses were really challenging and some of the professors were really eccentric. And I, I really appreciate eccentric professors coming, can really tell you based on our, our history at Kingston College. But anyway, I really appreciate eccentric professors. And yeah, so I, I decided that, well, business is not for me. I have no interest in there right now. Right now, um, at, at, a point in, at a point in time, a point in time in my life. Then it was UTEC, the electrical and computer engineering program. That was a lovely experience. That was for two years. It was, it was just brilliant. To say, to say the least, um, during that program, I have made, um, I have made beautiful friendships, um, both with, with fellow colleagues and with um, professors. Within that time, I had the opportunity to take part in international robotics competitions with the IEEE, IEEE team that was there. Beautiful experience. That our competition was in Florida. That was a beautiful experience. I learned a lot, you know. And I truly believe that that was one of the greatest years that UTEC would have had to offer me um, because there were so many personals that I could, I could have learned from versus just me doing, me becoming a part of a community and like, oh, well, this is this, that is that, just do my schoolwork and get an A and then move on and see how I can get a job. It was a lot more than that. It was, it was bigger picture, you know, people that did not think according to the normal dimensions of um, of just living and just and just doing things to survive, and more of what can I do new today, or what can I learn that I I, I did not know yesterday. You know, it was a beautiful experience. Really appreciate them and them, lovely. But I still longed for more. My curiosity peaked even further into fields of aerospace engineering and computer engineering. The program at UTEC was okay. It was it was good. You know, not discounting the program that they have at that university, but I was just looking for a lot more. And I ended up at University of South Florida doing the same program, but with an additional one year for the master's program, the four plus one program that I was telling you about. So far, it's, it's been a beautiful experience. Um, obviously, the opportunities are a lot greater. But what I really appreciate at this university is the diversity of population and the ability to learn. You know, that is my thing. Wherever you go, you must be able to learn from at least two or three persons per semester, something new, you know, and, and bringing people from various parts of, parts of the world, Russia, China, Vietnam, Mexico, so many different places, so many different friendships, so many different relationships, so many different learning opportunities this university has offered me. So it has been a beautiful experience, you know. As Kadim said, it is not just a one, two, three thing where you say, yo, John, I'll start, I'll come out of high school, I'm gonna know someone, do this, I'm gonna know someone, and that. You may have some type of inclinations to a certain program or to a certain field, but at the same point in time, you don't know nothing for sure. You know, it's, a, it's always a journey and, and every step that you take, you will learn more and more about yourself and more and more about where, if I may, where God wants to take you, you know? So yeah, that is me, that is me. Right back to Karim. All right, so I think Nicola would have covered, you know, some of his reasons for why he chose his career, you know, his interest in physics. Um, and just wanting to be challenged. For me, these are really my four reasons. So it wasn't like I was always passionate about engineering, right? Or the electronics engineering that I did my degree in. As I said, when I was leaving sixth form, and 
I saw electronics engineering as a program at UWI. I really just thought it could have been a cool thing to do, right? And other people might say that that not really sound responsible and nice and all, whatever. But I mean, I look at my phone, I look at all the gadgets we use, you know, the PS4, your game systems, um, the television, and all of them have some form of electronics in them. I'm like, yo, it's just so cool what can be achieved with electronics. That's my first reason for choosing, you know, electronics engineering as my field of study by extension career. And then I thought to myself, I mean, it could always be cool, you know, but will it have relevance? And again, I said, yeah, man, this field must have some kind of relevance. The age we're living in is, I want to say, the age of technology. You'll only become more advanced where electronics is concerned. And electronics is so diverse that it spreads into many fields, right? You know, there's transportation, it could be in hospitality, it could be in security, um, it could be in consumer, um, business, you know, like buying and selling of stuff. And so job security was there. So apart from it being cool, I could at least know that after finishing, and if I was properly equipped, I'd have a job. My other reason though is being in high school I did the sciences right through, you know, biology, chemistry, physics, um could say IT is a science as well. Math is definitely a science, guys. We love math, definitely. Um, but what I'd say is, in high school, most of what you did was, you know, theory based. I don't think I got a good appreciation for the practical aspects of it. You know, you learn about some theory of electricity in high school where you don't get to play with electricity. Although you don't want to play with electricity because it can harm you. Um, but you learn about resistors and you never actually see a resistor in high school. The first time I saw a resistor in real life was in university when I had a lab which was graded for the same thing. Crazy. Um, so I really wanted to put the, the theory that I've been learning and that I was going to learn into practice. And then my fourth reason, y'all see that guy right there? And you're probably wondering, you know, who is this guy? This is Leonardo da Vinci, right? Um, I put him here because he's an inventor. I remember being young and I had three things in mind for what I wanted as a career. Apart from my very first desire was to be Batman. Right, but I mean, as I got older, I realized that probably wasn't going to work out. I'm going to rule it out still. Um, but then I wanted to be involved in the medical profession. But at the same time, I wanted to own a business. Yeah. I want to be Batman. It needs to be an eccentric millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire. That's why I need to make sure, you know, we do doing thing right in you know, the electronics field. Right? So, you know, I considered being involved in the medical profession as well as owning my own business that would help to get me to the millionaire, billionaire status, um, as well as, you know, inventing stuff. So, my fourth reason was that I wanted to invent, invent stuff. And inventing stuff was a matter of identifying problems in society um, or problems in my daily life and coming up with solutions. I don't know if you guys know the name Elon Musk. Um, he is the owner of Tesla, SpaceX and a particular company called The Boring Company. Um, what they do essentially is bore tunnels underground to be alternative pathways you know, to roads. And that idea essentially came up because you know, he was tired 
of sitting in traffic for hours and hours. So I said, all right, if I can build my own underground roadway, then that is less time spent in traffic for me. And that's the kind of thing, you know, I want to do as an engineer. In terms of opportunities now, um, where scholarships are concerned, I was fortunate enough to be awarded the Bruce Ricard Scholarship offered by the Grace Kennedy Foundation. Bruce Ricard Scholarship is specifically for KC. My math work here. Repeat. My mommy works with Grace Kennedy. Nice, nice. Grace Kennedy is a very good company, all right? I'll endorse them all the I time. know the CEO. Nice. Don Webby? Yep. Nice. So, yeah, I got a scholarship from them. Um, but the scholarship they offer, not just what they offer other scholarships as well um, that people can get um, in terms of internship opportunities. Um, when I left, university. I, I did several interviews, wasn't successful with many of them. Um, but I know JPS offers an internship opportunity if you're so interested. Um, and where I currently work, Huawei, they offer an internship uh, opportunity as well. And in terms of opportunities, I'd want to say you can create your own opportunities. If you are able to, you know, come up with a solution and impacts a large part of the population or a sector um, in Jamaica, then I'm pretty sure that you can get an opportunity from that. You know, somebody might see a design and say, whoa, you know, I like this design. I want to purchase this design from you. Or I want to help you to develop that design. Um, so you can create your opportunities as well. Anything to say, Maka? Pretty much um, according to the same lines of discussion in which you were having. Concerning scholarships, I was also afforded a couple of scholarships to attend uh, University of South Florida. Fortunately, they cover all the expenses. One example of, um, of them came from National Commercial Bank, where mom works. And uh, you have others that came from directly from universities themselves as a result of being a part of societies or clubs or groups that are on campus, as well as general awards for academic achievement. So pretty much according to the same lines of discussion that Kadim was, was praise God. Um, for concerning in internships, I I currently work as a software developer at the University of South Florida IT's department. Um, if you'd like to know more about that uh, about about that career, I, I I can I can let you know. It's it's a pretty. You live in America. Yeah yeah yes I do. I go to. You're lucky. What's, what what you mean lucky? Why you say lucky? I'm born in America, but I don't get to live. Yeah, you really want to live here, son? Right now, with everything I go on here, son? I'm not glad for their backyard. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I'm, not glad for, I'm not glad for the backyard every day. Every day, um, my message family, I call them, I check up on them and all kind of something. I mean, I say, yo, it would have just be a, such a beautiful experience just to wake up in my own bed. Just one morning. <laughs> and we look out, we look out at the window. We see like a big coconut tree. And we hear my mother um I'm, I cook some porridge in the um what you call it. In the, in the kitchen. I say, yo, Johnny, you ready? I say, yeah, mom, I'm ready, mom, I'm ready, man. Them look a thing there, brother. I, mean, I tell her, I say it. You will see still, you will see still. In time, you will see say, these little things are not so little at all. Anyway, yeah, so scholarships um, coming directly from the university and from Aki and Breadfruit. I'm going to tell you, um, a long time ago, I've got to the end of the university on track because I'm going to cost me all the time. It's that good Jamaican Aki. 
Oh God, brother, you know how long me eat them. <laughs> anyway, ah, uh, I'm uh, trying to focus. Yes, so um, internships. Then uh, Miss Ricketts is really general star plant. You know, so them now good planting up here. The, the planting what them have it it. Me no know sit wrong with it. Me <laughs> not go out with nothing. It's sweet. <laughs> eh? Is the planting sweet? No, it's not sweet at all. It it. It, it have this little sour vibe to it, isn't it? Like, I don't know. It have this, it, I don't know. It, I don't know what I want. I don't know if them, them, them take it off of the tree too early or I have no idea. They use them yes, early. Guys, yes, guys. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so scholarships coming directly from university and from companies back home. Um, internships. I currently work as a software developer, a part of the University of South Florida IT department. Um, we can have, talk about that after a Q&A section. You can ask me all you want about that. As it concerns creating opportunities for yourselves, I agree all, wholeheartedly with Kadim. Currently, we're working on projects together, and these projects are, are mostly aimed at different sectors that are in Jamaica. Um, we won't tell you the details. You can ask thereafter in the Q&A section about the details of these projects, but I agree wholeheartedly with him. The best way to learn and the best way to give back is to work on projects that relate to different sectors of your of your um, society. Anyway, yeah, that's that's me. That's it. That's it. No more talking. <laughs> so, in terms of you know requirements for engineering in a general sense, you know, depending on the field, they have specific requirements. But well, in Jamaica, you need a secondary level qualification to get into tertiary level, right? Um, typical subjects you'll need are physics, math, and then now if you're doing biomedical engineering, of course, you need to know biology, right? If you're doing civil engineering, then you'll probably be required to do technical drawing or GMED, which is the CAPE level of technical drawing. Um, then you get your tertiary level qualification, which is a degree. So my degree is the Bachelor of Science in Electronics Engineering, right? Um, to become a professional engineer in Jamaica. So right now, I am not recognized as a professional engineer in Jamaica, nor do I recognize myself to be one, honestly. Um, so... I have an engineering degree from the University of the West Indies, but until I am successful in my application with CURB, I am not a professional engineer in Jamaica. Um, so well, yeah, sir, after, yeah. Once you get a vacation, come down to Jamaica and eat some fish and festival. You guys from Makala. Ah, me here, me here. Can you be stuck, you know, so we'll try to pay attention. We'll get to have that after. So, yeah, um, Ferb, you just need two years of experience in your field, working under a professional engineer um, to qualify, and you need a degree from a recognized tertiary level institution in Jamaica. And I think the most important part I want to stress about the qualification um, this part is the final point projects and skills so I left UWE with a degree but I didn't feel as if I was an engineer that's why I said I don't consider myself to be an engineer um, I don't think I have taken on enough projects nor do I have enough skills to call myself an engineer um, and what we need to do I'm saying is elevate our standard of thinking and our, our standards in general. Let them compare with engineers across the globe. So, um, the only project I can really say, I would have done projects in university, right, for grades and assignments, but the only project I've done personally was something I call a birthday box. Um, and having done that, you know, I was so, I felt so good. It took a while, it took me about two weeks to work on, you know, from the design of the circuit 
to the design of the packaging um, and then I had to test it you know put it on the circuit board and connect everything together ensure nothing never blow up or ensure someone never get shot and then the thing there um, but when it all came together you know, it was a wonderful thing the importance of projects is that projects help you to learn more you know they help you to develop skills skills like soldering um, programming is a very important skill um, you have 3d design as a skill as well and uh, just circuit analysis and all those other things um, yeah so projects and skills very important and you don't have to wait until you're in university to take on projects at all in fact if you are in high school now and you take on projects you can put that on your resume and that will increase your chances of getting into the university you desire if you want to go overseas to study when they see these things on your report um backed up by your grades i'm like no man i forget that student here in my school right because this student is going to be successful yep yep um i agree i agree in totality with that even in applying to this university, or thinking about other universities in the future that I'll be attending, what was truly pivotal in their decision on my application was the type of projects that I've been working on, the type of competitions that I've been taking part in, you know, the type of teams that I work with, you know, project types they are really, really important. And to, to tell you the truth, for me, they're just really fun, you know. It's going from ground zero to, to ground whatever score you would give yourself it is it is such a beautiful thing from the least from the, the the little um seeing like observing a problem around the house for example around the back and they realized that the dog the mouths are grown and um what do you call it i eat out the garbage or something like that or some some type of type of intrusion for example i'm, I'm giving a very specific example based on what was happening back, back back at home so we have a lot of dogs next door and they have I don't know, I don't know where they get that tendency from. Who teach them that? Fit, fit, I tell them say, um, them have two yard, but um, every night at run like run run them time they, them always come around the back of the yard, and them that's where all the garbage to take what them need to take and then move on and gone, and then when morning come, we I say yo, we don't know how them get in are all the place because as far as we concerned the fence up so what that did what that did is that it put up a surveillance system right and in feedback the surveillance system to to this wireless network when it was set up and basically him can't see everything that is going on with, with his phone so what he did was that not to record it and watch it live so him <laughs> him bring up the app on him phone and turn on the surveillance system and then he saw that there was a, 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 a very very small hole within the fence that the dogs were, were were barely passing through and that is just an example of employing a solution to a commonplace problem and if you if you bring that type of mentality to for example the society of Jamaica and you look at the different sectors like construction and education and agriculture especially agriculture we can talk about that afterwards you're seeing you're seeing that a lot of these problems can be solved by with your just your day-to-day -day automation solutions you know nothing too complicating nothing too tech savvy just just these little um these teeny bits teeny diy projects do it your own projects can can put you far away um to, to to arriving at a solution to these problems you know it's just a type of mindset and just being aware of the resources that are available to you as high school students or as university students, which we will be talking about in the future. But yeah, it's, I agree wholeheartedly, the projects, projects are key. So in terms of, you know, what I have done thus far, 
Um, I have thought and I have, um, and I'm currently an intern. As a teacher, you know, it was an interesting experience because I taught at KC. And really what that involved was of course showing up for class and teaching in class. Um, but it also involved a lot of work at home, you know, preparing for lessons, marking assignments, you know, I gave the students, um, designing exam questions, um, and just the whole administration of what is expected from teachers. Teachers like students have to um, register every day to say that they came to school. And, you know, teachers have to attend meetings on a weekly basis. So that was what I had to do as a teacher. And how the teacher and the electronics engineering fit in, I taught um, the subject electrical and electronic technology, which was offered to the fourth and the fifth form students. So that's where my knowledge from university was able to benefit me, not directly in the field of engineering, but in the field of teaching. And now as an intern, to be honest, I don't do much daily. Um, I work from home, thank God, you know, with the whole COVID situation. Um, but at basic, I'm required to be online and available for whenever my mentor or members of the core team, because I'm a core network engineer intern, um, require me to do anything. Most of the work that I've done thus far is really information collection. You know, Huawei has their own systems. Um, you can go on and you can collect information about the various elements of the network um, that exists in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. I uh, I tutored as well. I didn't teach because, you know, I'm not on the the professor level that Kadim is on. As I said, he's a top man. But um, for me, I tutor and I, I still tutor physics, computer science, as well as mathematics courses from the high school level to the university level, the second second year university level. Um, as, a, as a tutor, it is... Yes, William Taylor just said, just mentioned that you work at Huawei. Yeah, he does. So as a tutor, it's the same type of expectations. Um, the sessions are more streamlined. So, you know, from such time to this time, 2.30 to whatever time, you communicate with the student and you see what is what. Uh, as an intern, a software developer intern, it depends on the season. You know, it depends on the semester. But during spring and fall semesters, the workload is a lot more because you have you have students on campus and you have a lot more maintenance and a lot more sprint tasks, sprint projects, a lot more projects to be worked on. But during the summer term, things die, die down a little bit and the projects are more geared to backlog, we call them backlog projects, stuff that are important but not as important as stuff that we would do normally in the spring and fall semester. So you have work. But it, it is not as lively as, as, as it would be during the spring and, and the fall terms. But yeah. So I'll tell you guys might be interested to know, you know, how much money does an engineer make? And the money an engineer makes depends on the field that he or she is in and how developed that country is um, towards that. Generally in Jamaica, the pay compared to US is not that great, right? Um, but speaking from my personal experience, um, this and interviews I've done and you know my current internship. I'd, I'd want to give you a range of about 90,000 to 160,000. I mean, I would have tried finding websites that would estimate a range, but I don't know how accurate they are, so I use my own estimates. I mean, 
I was. Repeat. U.S. dollars. No, these are Jamaican dollars. Okay. Yeah, at a case it would have been on on any given month, let's say from sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars. Um, which means if I work more time, I could have made more. So my my salary range would say ninety thousand to one hundred sixty thousand. I mean, and I believe for people leaving university, I don't know, I guess it just depends on your status in life. Um, it's a decent earning, especially if your earning before was just lunch money, right? Lunch money salary can't compare to what you earn um, in these internships or jobs. Um, Cool, cool. Uh, for so we can start it now. Um, for the two terrain, it's, it's what is it? Fourteen, fifteen, fifteen dollars an hour. Um, I would normally have say ten, ten hours a week, two turn, thereabouts. Fourteen dollars an hour, ten, ten, ten hours a week for the software development position. As a student, we cannot work more than 20 hours during normal normal semester periods, such as spring and fall. Within breaks, such as spring break or summer holidays or Christmas holidays, that's, that's if you're still in the country, uh, they, you are allowed to work over the 20 up to a maximum of 40. They pay you $10 an hour. Or 11, is it 11? Yeah, $11 an hour after tax. Yep, $11 an hour. And that would equate to thereabouts on a monthly basis, 700, yeah, seven, 700, 700 a month. Um, that's close to 90, that's close, that's um, close to what, what Kadim, that I want that Kadim was speaking to. And let me just make sure. Yep, yep, ninety there about as a as a student intern. Yeah. Oh, oh, I forgot. Okay, so you have, so it is it is quite different for, so you have student internships, you have entry level internships, and and then you have full time internships. Student internships are normally around ninety to one hundred and twenty. If we're talking in, in terms of Jamaican or in terms of US, would be 700, 600 to 700 US on a monthly basis. Uh, for entry level positions, there would be three to four thousand on a monthly basis. Like that's US. That's like, and let me check again. Three thousand. Da da da. So yeah, four hundred to five hundred thousand for entry level positions. That's when they leave university and um, for full-time positions when they're moving out of uh, like the first two years of working or the first year of working for a company the salary, the salary norm normally increases by three or four thousand so that would be around about like 800 to 900 a month in terms of Jamaican 800 to 900 thousand in terms of Jamaican in the computer engineering field for the other fields, it may be similar, but I am, I'm really not sure. But yeah. Yeah, so we're essentially at the end of our presentation. Um, before we go, you know, two things. I want to share some resources with you that you can use to develop your skills from early as now. Um, and then you have the Q&A, of course. So there's the Arduino website. And Arduino is essentially um 
small tool that you can use to create electronic projects, um, varying in complexity. Tutorials Point is a website that you can go to learn about various programming languages. The same for W3 schools. Um, suppose you're interested in making a website. Typically, if you want to create a website, at least, you know, where they start on the basics is with a language called HTML. You might want to include a little JavaScript. Um, you might want to pretty it up with some CSS. I know you hear me saying all these things, then you're probably like, you know, what is he talking about? Check out tutorials point and check out the three schools and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then the final resource I'd want to suggest, I recently learned about this one. Um, I learned about it from Makala. It's called Tinkercad. Now Tinkercad is a software, online software that allows you to do 3D designs, I'd want to say. Um, uh, what the possibility your packaging for your circuit and you're allowed to test and simulate um, your design. So it's a pretty, it's really cool. And these are, I'd want to say simply enough that even in high school, you can use them and master them. Two of the most general resources though, I haven't listed them because everybody knows them, um, are one, www.gogle.com. Google. Just Google it. If you're not sure um, what you want to do, Google it. I am quite confident that Google will have your answers. And then suppose you don't really like read, right? You want to look more action. Next word is www.youtube.com. I mean, a lot of my learning is done between both um, sites. Sorry for that. Um, but then if you're into more formal learning, you can check out Coursera.com or edX. So those are some resources. I really encourage you. If you know what you want to do from now in terms of your career, start working on those skills. Start doing projects. So that by the time you're at my stage, you're like a real boss, you know, you develop a game already, you invent a thing already where people are weird and, you know, you can see a name in a newspaper and all these other things. So I want to move on, on to the Q&A. If you have any questions on and we'll try our best to answer them. What's a good age to start internships? Oh, so Hannah here is, is ready to present when done. Okay, so I guess, I, I guess I'll answer this question. A good age to start internships as soon as possible. Um, I know that in Jamaica, it's, it, it may not be as, what you call it, as popular as here, but you do have opportunities for high school students to take part in that can, can can, can help in, in their uh, electronics development, their, their software development um, growth or knowledge base or whatever it is, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, working with circuits, working with breadboards, working with Tinkercad, working with Arduino, Arduino is working, working with a lot of things, you know, it's just to do your research um, at home and then just contacting as, and com contacting as, much, as much people as possible over the phone and seeing where you can get your hands dirty. You know, so as, as I'd say as soon as possible, they might not be as formal as, as in terms as I normally are, but you, you'd be surprised, you know, you'd be surprised. So as soon as possible. Yeah, someone is asking about <laughs> my work at Huawei. Let me be honest with y'all. Huawei in Jamaica doesn't do the cutting edge um, work that Huawei does. Um, the Huawei office in Jamaica is really like a sales office, 
slash maintenance point. So the cool stuff happening in China, you know, developing the phones, etc. Um, if I'm being honest, my internship has been pretty boring. You know, it, it not, isn't necessarily what I thought it would have been, but I am grateful for the experience nonetheless. There was a good age for internship. Repeat. What's a good age for internship? All right. So, as Makala was saying before, internships. The unfortunate thing is, you might not be available to you might not be able to get them until you leave, like university. Um, but here's why I say that: it's generally the concept that by time you leave the university, you have acquired the necessary skills um, that the internship will acquire. So I think if you can develop those skills from now, then companies will have no choice but to give you an internship. Because I've seen reports where in the US, you know, you have an 11 year, I think it was like 11 when you developed the game and you got an internship at Facebook by 14 probably so it really depends on you and how qualified you are for the internship age is not the qualification it is the skills and the projects that qualify you to some extent so if if that's it, if there are no um, um, no more no more questions, uh, thank you guys for having us. I hope you you can. Yes, sir, you're welcome. Uh huh. Go again. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Yes. Um. Th thanks for having us. We really appreciate the time taken for you guys to sit and, and listen you need to. And you go on vacation soon. Soon. Come soon. To Jamaica. Soon. We're working and on it. Aki and saltfish. Yes, we're working on it. We're working on it, my boss. We're working on it. So I'll promise a vacation and you'll promise that that you check out one of yeah. these, these resources. That's that sounds like a good deal. Yes, yeah, so thanks for having us again, guys. I uh, really hope we learn something or can move on to learn more things. And hopefully this helps you. It wasn't too boring. <laughs>